Welcome to Connection with Brian and Nicole Wright. Welcome to Connection. We are so glad to have you this week. And uh, we, yeah, we've been enjoying these. Last week we talked about a reset and what is a reset. And uh, this week we're going to talk more about reset. And this uh, episode would be called Zero Point in Reset. What is a zero point? Uh, would you like to pray before we start today? Sure. Awesome. <laughs> Are you picking on me? No, I'm thinking we need to reset this because <laughs> right before you see Brian talking, he's picking on me. And I'm like, oh, wait a minute. No, because then I he starts the show and I can't come back. So <laughs> how about we pray? And I'm going to pray for him. She's going to lay hands. <laughs> I'm going to lay hands. All right, Lord, we thank you today. We thank you that we can come in your joy. We thank you that... We can come and just love on you and yeah. learn about you and fellowship with you, Lord. And I thank you that all the while we are doing this, we are growing in our knowledge of you, growing yeah. in our relationship you. with you and coming to know you in a very real way and just connecting with you in a way we have never done before, Lord. And Father, we thank you for the honor of being used by you, of pointing people to you. And we just thank you for this, this message being something that will draw people to reset with you, getting back to that zero point of yes. you being their first love. And we praise you for it, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So we, you know, just talking about what reset is, uh, we were talking last week about what is reset. And reset is resetting your fellowship back to the original love that you had when you first were born again. And if you've never been born again, it's resetting you to the uh, design that God had for your life from the very beginning. He had great and good plans. And if you haven't ever accepted Christ, then maybe you haven't opened the door to the plans that God has. But you can do that right now today. And once you do that, there's a, just a flood of the love of God that will pour out in your life. And when it does, everything changes. And it's yeah. awesome. I mean, it's just a different... <laughs> we got... You're making me want to pick on you, the looks you're giving me. <laughs> We're, I see, don't know what he's talking about. Well, <laughs> she's like, no, not me, huh? What? <laughs> so, But you know what? Here's That actually goes very well. Because reset is getting to the place where... You know God so well that you know what he's thinking, what he's doing, and that's exactly what you're doing. She's making little gestures and looks at me, and I know she's thinking something and uh, probably wanting to knock me in the head. But uh, you talk about reset, and I'll make what? faces at you. <laughs> well, I think what I think about reset is really a sponge. You know, first you start hmm. off with this hard you know, piece of material, Oh, and that's good. it has, you yeah. know, it's rigid, it's hard, it really has no purpose because it's so hard that if you try to use it, it's going to scratch the surface. But once it has that water, the thing that it's been designed for, and longing water. for, yeah. yes, and we are that hard sponge to start with. You know, we go hungry and thirsting, and, but we don't even know what, we've need, what we need because we've never seen it. And all of a sudden, somebody introduces you to the living water. And you just soak it up and you start, yeah. you completely change shape because you swell up with that love that's been, that you've been designed for. And suddenly you are soft and you were able to bend and to mold into whatever you're supposed to do. So when I think of reset, I think of a sponge. It's designed to soak up that water and be used. But without that water, it's, it's pointless. Yeah. It can't be used. And without the love of God within us, which is, you know, the living water for us. And what we are designed for, we're always going to go through life wondering what is our purpose and wondering why no matter what we do, we feel unfulfilled. That is such a great example. I, I love that. And, and because we, without the living water of Jesus, without the intimate fellowship, we are always dry, yes. always thirsty, always needing something. And we're rigid. Our lives are rigid. They're just not, uh, we have no flexibility. So something comes along and our life snaps. Yeah. It just breaks. I, I don't know that I've heard you use that example, but I love that. And then 
And then, you know, a lot of times even today they have those sponges that you really don't know what they are. They're yeah. just all, you know, clumped all together. But when you add the water to them, you actually see what they shape. were designed yeah. to be. That's how Jesus is in our lives. Yeah. That I just want to talk about that the rest of the time. Forget about zero point. Zero point what? No, let's talk about sponges. <laughs> You're welcome. You can use my analogy anytime. I appreciate that. I'll be preaching tomorrow, so that'll be good. <laughs> so we hope that, by the way, we hope that you're having a great 2016. This will be uh, about, what, the end of January. And uh, hope you're having a great one. And we hope that you are fulfilling every plan that God has for your life in this year. And uh, matter, matter of fact, let's just take a break for a second. Let's just pray over your year. Yeah. Um, Lord, we just pray right now. Father, thank you for 2016. This is a year of hope for people. We just thank you so much. We just thank you so much for this year of hope in the lives of the people that's here in this right now. We just praise you for it. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness. Thank you for your mercy that you're pouring out. Lord, thank you for your fellowship that you are releasing to everyone here in this in new ways. Lord, let us be like that sponge that although we were dry, you gave us living water in Jesus Christ. And Lord, right now we just receive that yeah. living water. We receive that and we praise you for it, Lord. Lord, I just ask that the reality of you, the reality of your love, would be made manifest in every person that's here in this. May their 2016 not just be a year of hope, but a year of manifested hope in their lives. May hope become filled with the life that would manifest and bring the promises of God in every area of their life. Lord, may their finances be correct. According to the will of God in heaven. May, may their protection be whole and yeah. no holes in it, no gaps, Lord. May they be delivered out of everything. May they be restored to you, Lord, in every way. May restoration come to their mind, to their body. And may they be healthy in you, in Jesus' name. Do you have anything else to pray there? No. You covered it. Amen. 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 So... In talking about reset, he really does want to give us that life-giving water. Yeah. And he, he said, look, abide in me and I should abide in you. And the, the life, the nutrients, the everything that you need is supposed to come through the vine. I'm the vine. You're the branches. And so he always shows us in his word and in his pictures, he shows us examples of how he wants connection. Right. And that's, you know, that's the whole reason why this show is called what it is, is to help people come to that place where they are connecting with God on a very real basis. And we want to connect with you personally, but what the whole purpose of our connection is we're hoping that this is a medium, whether it be by radio or TV or Internet, we hope that this is a way that as we connect to you, that we can help, uh, all, help you and us connect to God even more in a more intimate way. We want you to be reset in your first love with God. Mm -hmm. um, when, what we talked about last week is that reset takes us, there's three proofs to reset. Number one, the presence of God. Number two, the prayers. Mm -hmm. Your prayers are answered. Number three, you start to proclaim him. Here, here's one of the things on this. All right. We didn't really explain this last week, but the presence of God is this. Um, if you imagine that God was sitting here with us, right? He's sitting at the table here with us. If he really was sitting here, if he really was a part of this discussion and we had a chair for him, he was sitting in the chair, um, how would we, would we be concerned about anything? No. no. Would we be worried about health or sickness? Would we be worried about, if God was sitting right there with you, wherever you're at, would we be concerned about anything? No. Yet, we are concerned constantly in this world. The world has taught us constantly to be concerned. Yeah. But yet, Jesus never said that he would leave us. In matter of fact, he said, he said the opposite. I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Right. Which he means said, he is 
always I'll be with there. you always. Yeah. He says, look, I never change. I came that you might have life to know me, to be in intimate fellowship with me. And yet we have accepted the lie many times that God is not with us. If we just, you know, and what we're doing is we're walking by sight mm -hmm. and not by faith. If we have God with us, if we are living in his presence, all of a sudden our thinking changes on everything. And the areas in our life where lack used to be, we start to realize, I don't have anything to worry about. God's with me. Right. Well, that's what reset does for you. When you start living in a reset, you start experiencing the presence of God. Well, if that really truly becomes a reality in, in your, your life, if that really is a reality, how many of your prayers start to get answered? Well... God's sitting right here with me. I'm in his presence. I'm his child. He loves me with a love that's everlasting, with a love that's deeper than my mind even can sometimes wrap, it, wrap itself around. It's so deep it has to be uh, spiritually discerned. His love is that pure, that perfect. All of a sudden, I start to get a hold of that, and I realize what I'm believing for, he's going to do. Yeah. His promises, he's going to fulfill them. So I have the presence of God. Now I'm seeing my prayers answered. Well, you live in the presence of God. You have your prayers answered. Well, You're going to be telling the world. You're going to be telling people about it. You're yeah. going to be proclaiming him. And how many, and just ask yourself this question. We talked about this last week. What do we need to do? We need to judge ourselves accurately. That means we need to stop and take a look at ourselves and really evaluate where we are, where we are and what we're doing. So if we're doing that in, the, in this situation, if we are experiencing the presence of God and the prayers, we're going to be, and the prayers are being answered, we're going to be proclaiming, how many church people do you know, including yourself, how many church people do you know right now? that truly are experiencing the presence of God. And before you answer that question, you might want to wait till the rest of this broadcast because we're going to be talking about a couple of things that might uh, show you change a little bit different. Yeah, it'll change the way you think about that. How many people are seeing 100% of their prayers being answered? Because a lot of people are praying prayers that really, you know, they wasn't a godly prayer in the first. They didn't seek God before they asked God. And so he's not answering something that's outside of his will. But when you're in the presence of God, all of a sudden your priorities change. If God's sitting right here, you stop asking God to do mm -hmm. silly stuff. And all of a sudden you're asking God only what's at his heart, what he wills. And not only is he sitting here, I'm asking him the right things. Those things are getting done. 100% of your prayers are being answered. Then all of a sudden you're so excited about that, you're, you're not going to be able to help yourself yeah. from telling somebody. How many Christians do you know they're really experiencing the presence of God, they're getting all of their prayers answered, and they are constantly proclaiming how good he is? Outside the church walls and when the preacher's yeah. not around. Not in the pew on Sunday yeah. morning. I'm talking about 24-7. Yeah. How many people do you know like that, including me and you? Not many. No. This is something we're growing into. Yeah. Yeah. It's, this is not something we have perfected. This is revelation that we are growing It's a in. constant yeah. growth. And have, it's, well, and it's more, the, the more you spend that yeah. time and that presence with him, the more you get to know him. And the more you get to know him, the more you know how to pray and what his answers will be. So it's, it's a constant yeah. growth as you're continually um, expanding that relationship and fellowship with him. Yeah. I've had people, I, I know nobody that's living that out really that way. Not, not personally. I have had people say, oh, yeah, I'm doing that. And they're answering from a very surface level. Yeah. And once I actually get into this message with them, they're going, oh, wait, no, I'm, I, I didn't have. I thought I knew what you were asking, but, you know, they're not really experiencing the fullness of the reality of this. Well, and the great thing is that so many people would look at that as a bad. Right. And it's not. It's a good because that means as good as we have it, you know, as, as close as our fellowship is with God. You know, I think last week we were talking about, you know, I was, God was laughing at me and we were joking around and we were talking about how, you know, I walk in realizing that he is with me all the time on the good days, on the bad. He's there. When yeah. I goof up, he even laughs at me. So even as good as our relationship is now, realizing that I am not where I need to be 
only means that it can get it can even get better. better. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. So it's Ooh. not, you know, pride would say, oh, don't admit that you're not doing it all right. But humility and grace realizes, praise God, I'm not yes. getting it all right. It can get even better than this. Yes. That's an exciting thing. Yes. All of a sudden, you're not limited to where you're at right now. Right. All of a sudden, the potential has been, the ceiling's been busted open by the unlimited power and love of God that he has for you. That's a great thing. Yeah. So that's the power of reset. And so when you're moving in reset, you're going to have these proofs. Uh, presence, prayers, and you're going to be proclaiming. Okay. You're going to have presence of God. You're going to see your prayers answered, and you're going to be proclaiming Christ everywhere because you're so excited about the presence and the prayers, Amen. and you love him, and you understand his heart, and all of a sudden that excites you, so you're telling people. This reset comes from Revelation chapter 2 uh, and verse 1 through 5. If you want to read that uh, verse, I guess let's start at 2 and read that real quick. Okay, so Revelation 2, verses 2 through 5, say, I know your deeds and your toll and perseverance, and that you cannot tolerate evil men, and you put to the test those who call themselves apostles, and they are not, and you have found them to be false, and you have, and you have perseverance and have endured for my name's sake and have not grown weary, but I have this against you, that you have left your first love. Therefore, remember from where you have fallen, and repent, and do the deeds you did at first, or else I am coming to you and will remove your lampstand out of its place unless you repent. Yep. And if you, you, what we're talking about is reset is a reset to your first love. That's when God was your number one priority. You were so excited right. about him. Just like when you fall in love with your spouse or the boyfriend or girlfriend for the first time and you're so, they're your everything. You're thinking about them all the time. That's the way it generally is when people truly get born again in Christ. That's what reset is, is going back to that. And reset is important because he says if you don't do that, he said, I'm going to remove you. You can yeah. be doing great things, but if you're not living in this first love, then there's a problem. And well, you and have I think a it's important to know is because if you're going through the motions and you're doing it without love, God is love. Yes. So Amen. if you're doing it without love, you're doing it without God. It can have the right, yeah. you know, the right wrapping paper on it. You can, it can have the right words in it. But if it doesn't have love, then it doesn't have God in it. That's right. And that's why he'll come and remove it because you're not doing it for him, with him, and to his glory. Yes, yes. 1 Corinthians 13, 3 yeah. proves what you just said. We won't go there, but that you can go look that up. 1 Corinthians 13, 3. And then, uh, so reset is a continuous, heavenly, spiritual fellowship with our Father. It's a fellowship, not a relationship. All right? It's not just a relationship. Right. It's an intimate fellowship with our Father. Uh, I would highly recommend, uh, if you didn't see Reset Part 1, you, no matter where you're seeing or hearing this, you can go to connectionshow.org, look for Reset Part 1, and what is Reset. And that will help you catch, uh, get up to speed with us here. So Reset is not feelings. Right. It's not warm, warm and, and fuzzies. fuzzies. <laughs> so, oh, yeah, we they were telling us they were going to do a sound effect. We did it for you. So, oh, a reset is unconditional giving back and forth between you and God. A reset is going back to our first love of God before corruption set in. And so, this is something today uh, as we're kind of wrapping up. We're in the last uh, ten minutes of the show. We're talking about zero point, and so let us give the, you this example before we leave. We want to go back to the zero point. So have you ever had a pain that you've had for a really long time, and then all of a sudden it gets corrected? And, or you've been sick, and maybe you've been sick for days and days and days, and then all of a sudden it lifts, yeah. and uh, it's... It is awesome. <laughs> I love it when that happens. And it's like you forget how good you had it. <laughs> Freedom. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's awesome. Or how about this? Uh, this is one for me. Have you ever had uh, like a rattle in the car? And, 
and it get, you've had it for so long that you're used to the rattle, and uh, then all of a sudden, you finally get it fixed. Or, or maybe it's that little shimmy, you know, in the car as you're going down the road, little shimmy, do a little shimmy. <laughs> We're silly this time. <laughs> I like it. It's yeah. good. It's a real show. Um, so <laughs> With real people. it's not a fake. We're not fake. We're not fake. We're, I'm here. You're here too. <laughs> I'm, we're so glad that we find each <laughs> other funny. That's good. That's what makes our. We're hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> so. We're, anyway. <laughs> we're Have you ever in had the, car. The, the shimmy? Thank you. That's what got it. We can do it again. Shimmy. But it's not fun <laughs> in your car. <laughs> <laughs> Shimmy What's is funny not is they're in the, in the back. The sound people are yeah, going boo. Yeah. <laughs> they want to have the sound button. So, have you ever had that time in your car where it's constantly been shaking and shimmying, and or it's had this rattle, and then you get it fixed? It's like ah, oh, peace. It's you. It's like oh my goodness, that <laughs> is awesome. All right, let me ask you this question: Are we so trained by this world? and its environment to live in the flesh instead of the spirit that we don't realize that we have a shimmy, a rattle in our spiritual lives. We're so used to it that we don't even realize it anymore. That's what reset takes away. Yeah. Reset pulls back that darkness and shines the light on it and says, look, there's a reality of a fellowship with God that's even better than what you've been experiencing. Mm -hmm. In other words, what you've been going through and you thought this is as good as it's ever going to get, God says, mm-mm, you need to go back to my original plan and take a look at it again. And so it's like this. Sometimes maybe you feel like this. Inside, we know something is bad. We know that we need uh, relief from the pain and we need to fix the problem. But it's so standard in our society, only a very, very few are actually even not, not doing the right thing. Only a very few are actually even looking for a remedy. Mm -hmm. That is where our society is at. And as we were doing the series at church, um, it became obvious. I mean, just almost... Um, very soberingly obvious that this is exactly where we're at as a yeah. society. Uh, a lot of the body of Christ, the majority of it, the vast majority, we're living in a reality that has a shimmy, that has a pain that we've gotten so used to that we don't even realize uh, we got a problem. Yeah. Until you start it learning to reset yeah. and all of a sudden you start experiencing the reality of a reset relationship, a reset fellowship with God, and all of a sudden it's like, whoa, wait a minute. There's the hope yeah. I was looking for. So. Yeah. It makes me think of um, a chiropractor, actually, is because you, you go into the chiropractor and you don't even realize everything's out of alignment. Yeah. And I know I did the first time. Um, you know, I went in and I didn't realize my back was out of alignment, and that just comes from, you know, doing stuff, getting yeah. on the floor and playing with the kids or, you know, whatever um and he popped everything back in a line it's like wow i didn't even realize my back felt bad but this right. is great it's like i can move and stuff and it feels so good but then you after a few days your back is so used to being out of alignment it, goes it starts to get its way back and we have to realize that even when we get things right with god we have to constantly reset is a constant we have, we have a, a constant, flesh in a world yes. that's constantly trying to mold us your, to the world yeah system. your flesh is constantly yeah. gonna, gonna say well, that's not the way the world does it. You know, yes. your daddy didn't do it this way. Your granddaddy didn't do it this way. So certainly you shouldn't do it this way. Yes. And you'll start to get back into those old ways. Yes. So you have to constantly work to fill it, to get it right. Because when you're there, it's like, oh, yeah, this is great. You can live a life that you didn't even realize was possible. So here's, here's the couple of points. Have you ever played the telephone game? You, you know, we line up a bunch of people. Mm -hmm. Somebody at the end tells the first person a secret. They tell the next person. They tell the next person. And then they come all the way to back to the end person, and they speak out what the last person told them, and it's nowhere close mm -mm. to what the first person actually said. Yeah. 
And, and so, in, in other words, it got passed on so many times, and each time there was a little bit more uh, untruth. Yeah. There was a little bit more deception, person by person. So here's the question. Have we been playing a spiritual telephone game now for 6,000 years from the Garden of Eden through Adam all the way up to 2015, 2015. 2016, all the way up. Now, what we count as normal is not even close to normal with God. This is what Reset's about. Right. It's getting back and seeing what is normal to God. What is right? And so and we had this example. I, I was in uh, the Marines, and we would go through a process that we would call zeroing our, our weapon, zeroing the rifle. And so we would uh, set up on the rifle range, and we'd shoot a three-round group, and we would notice that our pattern was at a particular place on the target. Right. And then we would make our elevation, windage and elevation adjustments up and down, left and right, until we got those, uh, it on target. Bullseye. Yes, got it back in the bullseye. And then what we would do is we would mark down how many clicks to the left or the right or up or down did it take to get it on target. And that way, that was our zero point. That was when we were on target. Right. So our zero point with God is reset. Yeah. Our zero point with God is intimate fellowship. But here's the question. Are we, have we playing the spiritual telephone game so that what we think is good is so subpar, right. is so below level? In other words, we see somebody at church and they are having this great experience with God. But our only means of measuring that our only means of measuring how great it is is the p other people around us. Yeah. In other words, we think it's great because everybody else is not experiencing it on that level. Well, what if that wasn't great to God? Yeah. What if that was just a drop when he had an ocean? Yeah. That's what reset is, is taking a look at that. And, and we won't go into all of that, but I just, I'll... I think we'll talk about this next week. We'll talk some more about this. But here's, here's a little bit of what I'm looking at. Look at the glory experienced by Moses. Look at the relationship and fellowship that was so intimate with Enoch. Yeah. That he walked and talked with God. And remember this. He did not have Jesus. He did not have. He was still under the curse. Moses was still under the law and did not have a Savior given yet. And yet, it was so close to the zero point, so close to back to the garden where God started this and set up a spiritual intimacy with mankind. They were so close that they were walking in more glory than most of the people I've ever met. Yeah. Including myself. Right. I've had moments, but I haven't walked in it constantly mm -hmm. like they did. Is, here's the question that we want to leave you with today. Is there a zero point? Is there a beginning with God that's so much higher than what we've been experiencing that it, it just, it would take us to such a level it's hard for us even to put it into words. And I think right. the answer to that without question is yes. absolutely. absolutely. And so today, no matter where you're at or what you're doing, if you just want to say, Lord, I need to take the ceiling off my life. I need you. I need hope. Today, right now, Lord, I want to reset with you. Just say this, Jesus, I accept you right now as my Lord and Savior. You are saving me as I put faith in you right now. You are, I'm resetting with you if I've accepted you again. But you are the director of my life. And I believe that God brought you back to life and raised you up to heaven and raised me with you and seated me in heavenly places. I receive reset right now today in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for joining us. It's been another great week. I enjoyed yeah. this one. This was fun. Have a good one. Bye. Thank you for joining Brian and Nicole on this week's broadcast of Connection. Connection is all about connecting you more intimately with Jesus. Through that, we want to help you find your joy again and really live. 
Contact us or watch more shows online at connectionshow.org. We love you. Have a great week.